This is a quick tutorial that shows you how to apply for a commercial new permit through Clark County's Land Management System External Customer Portal. In this video, I'll walk you through the steps and give you some advice so that you avoid the most common application mistakes and make sure that your fees and reviews are generated accurately. A commercial new permit is used for a brand new building, a new modular placement, or a new addition onto an existing building. This permit covers new construction. If your project involves interior construction, like demising walls or tenant improvements, please apply for a commercial existing permit. If you need more information about permit types or scope of work, please review the commercial category handout available at Community Development's website. First, log into your CCLMS online account. If you need assistance creating an account in CCLMS, please visit Clark County's YouTube channel and review the account registration tutorial. Select Permits. Under Building Permits, select Commercial New. This project is a large shopping center that has retail areas for both food and clothing, as well as a merchandise storage area, a garden center, and a canopy that covers a customer loading area. You'll start by selecting your scope of work. There are several options for scope of work. This building is for a single business, and you'll be producing both the shell and the interior of this retail center, so you'll select fully completed building. A separate commercial existing permit is required if a separate business, like a bank or a coffee shop, is going to be added. You're building one retail center, so you'll enter one here. For type of use and census category, you're looking for the choices that offer the closest resemblance to your project. This building's type of use is Specialty Retail Center, and the census category is Stores and Other Mercantile Buildings. The best way to fill in this box is to list all the major sections of the project and the square footage that each section occupies. This information may have been broken down for you on the first pages of your site plan. The name of this project should be the name of the business that's going into the site. This business is called My Favorite Store. It could also be the real name of a bank or restaurant. You're starting from scratch, so it's not likely that there's another building permit associated with this project, but if there is, you can enter it here. On this page, you can search for your property using either the parcel or tax ID number or the property address. An address review is included in the permit evaluation process. The parcel ID and address are now part of your application. You may have a new box here that asks you to select a primary address. Simply click the drop down list and choose the correct address. Click here to retrieve the owner information for your parcel. You'll need to add the owner's phone number and email address. If you're the property owner and you're serving as your own contractor, make sure you check this box. On this screen, you must list at least one contractor on your project. If you know your erosion control contractor, please add it here. Otherwise, you'll need to add the CECL before your permit can be issued. If your project is still out for bid and you don't have a contractor selected already, please contact the CCLMS support team before moving forward in your online application. In the additional contacts section, you can add contact information for other people who are familiar with this project and who can answer questions if needed. It's a good idea to include, at the very least, your architect or engineer, and to note the primary contact person for your project. If you want to delete a contact, click the red X. Now you're going to add occupancies for this building. This can get a little tricky, and it will affect the fees that you pay and the reviews that your project will require. Again, this information may already be provided for you on the first few pages of your building plans. Otherwise, consider the different uses for different parts of the building. Does one section have sprinklers and another section doesn't? Two distinct occupancies would be needed. Are there multiple floors in the building? Each floor needs to have its own occupancy listed. We'll add four occupancies for this project. First, we'll add the retail space. The occupancy type is mercantile, and the construction type is 5B. The retail space occupies 12,000 square feet. The building is one floor, and we'll note that it's a retail space. It has sprinklers, and it's heated and finished. 
Next, we'll add the storage space. That's an S2 occupancy type, and the construction type is 5B. The storage space occupies 5,000 square feet, and it's on the first floor. This is storage space, and it has sprinklers, but it's not heated and not finished. The canopy loading area is a U1 occupancy type. The construction type is 5B. It occupies 600 square feet. There are no sprinklers and no heat, and it's not finished. The occupancy type for the garden center is mercantile, and it's a 5B construction type. It's 4,000 square feet, and it's also on the first floor. It's retail space. It doesn't have sprinklers, and it isn't heated or finished. This section asks for some basic details about your project. The valuation is equal to your total construction cost. Please include your preliminary or final site plan number. When you select your utilities, you'll trigger reviews that these agencies will need to provide at some point in the permit application cycle. It will be your responsibility to contact the appropriate agencies for approval. This project will include a retail section for food, so you'll need to check this box. It may be that you don't quite have all your documentation ready to submit, but you want to go ahead and submit your permit application. You might be missing your mechanical or plumbing plans, for example. In that case, you can defer the missing items for a fee of $361 per item. If you later decide to submit your application with that item, you can click the red X to remove the fee. At this time, Clark County does not have electronic plan review in place. Please submit your application packet directly to the Permit Center. Your application will not be considered for review until the packet is accepted by a permit technician in the Permit Center. Here you can see the application fees associated with your permit. To ensure that applicants are charged correctly, online payments are not accepted for this permit. So you'll need to write down your permit number and save your application, and then pay your permit fees at the Permit Center when you bring in your submittal documents. The final fees for your project, including impact fees if applicable, may change based on the details of your project. Your final fees may also change if Permit Center staff determine that additional reviews of your project are required, or if staff need to make changes to the information that you've provided. As of January 1, 2018, the Permit Center no longer accepts pre-printed checks in excess of the amount due at submittal. Customers are encouraged to pay online at the time of submittal or to complete their check once the application has been processed. Fee estimates can provide customers with a general idea of the fees associated with their permit, but the estimate should not be used to fill out a check. Refunds for less than $200 will not be returned, and customers should note that refunds can take up to six weeks to process. The permit technicians at the Public Service Center have been trained to help process your application as smoothly and quickly as possible. Their valuable experience and knowledge help build a solid partnership with you and promote an atmosphere of respect and teamwork. We thank you for using Clark County's online permitting system, and we look forward to working with you.